This evening on Newswatch, students begin to vote early. We'll have more. An Ames church was a target of arson this week. We'll bring you the story. Another big weekend lies ahead for Cyclone Athletics. Danny Rondeau will have more in sports. This is New Watch, News Watch 18, your source for cycle news, news Watch weather, and sports. 18. News Watch 18 starts now. Good evening, and welcome to the September 27th edition of Newswatch 18. I'm Giovanna Hajon. And I'm Emily Unkrich. Thank you for joining us. Early voting for the presidential election opened in Iowa today. Eager voters can visit the voting booths at various spots around campus up until the election on November 6th, when the regular voting will take place. Students have until October 22nd to register to vote. Registration booths will be located on campus on various dates. ISU TV's Kate Tyndall talks to political science experts about students' role in the year's election. This close political race, Republicans and Democrats alike are looking to win over young Americans, a number of whom are college-age students. But how are politicians planning to accomplish this goal? Newswatch went to Iowa State University's experts for the answers. Well, I think that one of the, the strategies of probably both campaigns is to recruit younger uh, voters uh, to work in their campaigns, to experience uh, the campaigns themselves and the issues that are, that are on the agenda. But how can one tell where the true interest of campaigns lie? You can, you can measure that a little bit by looking at, uh, you know, where the candidates go. How do Iowa State students compare with other students throughout the nation? The answer is debatable. I would be very surprised if there are any incidental issues among the young here that would be different from the from the nation as a whole. At Iowa State, a large percentage of students are focused on issues concerning future job prospects. Areas of regional recruitment also make a difference. Iowa State tends to recruit disproportionately from, from the reddish part of the state, if you will, from the parts of the state that tend to vote Republican. Both experts stress the importance of Iowa, a state with high literacy rates and a broad voter base in both main parties, to the outcome of the national election. Four weeks ago, President Barack Obama spoke here, on Central Campus, hoping to gain the student vote. Focusing on one voter group has weaknesses. Romney's campaign has been criticized for overlooking young people. I think the Romney campaign has just simply not been quite as adept, at least not so far at trying to fire up that student base. But if students do not turn out come November, campaigns that focus on gaining young supporters could be affected. The Obama campaign would be more effective uh, with uh, less uh, voter turnout. Either way, with the election drawing near, both candidates are running out of time to gain the support of America's student population. From ISU campus, Kate Tyndall, Channel 18 News. The ISU TV news team will have continuing election 2012 coverage until Election Day on November 6th. The ISU ambassadors and the League of Women Voters came together Tuesday to encourage student voter registration on campus. The groups provided voter registration forms and registration assistance. Both groups set up tables and signs at Central Campus, Parks Library, and the Memorial Union. National Voter Registration Day was Tuesday. State Gym will be closed Friday for the Order of the Knoll events. The Order of the Knoll is Iowa State's most prestigious donor recognition society. According to the ISU Foundation website, members of the Order of the Knoll believe in creating opportunities to transform lives at Iowa State. Their gifts, whether through lifetime giving, annual giving, or both, are essential to the future of Iowa State University. This is the first year State Gym will host this event. A woman set a balcony walkway in St. Thomas Aquinas Church on fire Tuesday night. ISU TV's Kate Tyndall brings you the story. It's been a harrowing past 24 hours for the staff and parishioners at St. Thomas Aquinas Church. On Tuesday evening, a fire broke out in a balcony walkway overlooking the main sanctuary of St. Thomas Aquinas Church, located on the corner of Lincoln Way and Ash Avenue. 
And I saw the flames shooting up in, in the church, in the sanctuary space. The Ames Fire Department responded to the church's automated alarm system at approximately 9.30 p.m. and reported moderate damage to the balcony walkway with moderate to heavy smoke damage throughout the building. The Ames police have charged 51-year-old Tina Meyer with first-degree arson. Meyer is currently in custody at the Story County Jail with bail set at $25,000. She has neither admitted to the crime nor given reason for her actions. All students and staff were evacuated from the building with no injuries reported. However, damage caused from the 12-foot high flames will prove a problem in the coming days. Though they hope to continue with regular office hours, services, and events by early next week, staff agree that this is an early estimate. With the building under repairs, the church has been forced to move its programs and services. Our Sunday Masses, we're working with our sister parish here in town, St. Cecilia, to reschedule some there and then we're hoping to find a large space on campus to have at least one on campus. Through the confusion, students are hopeful. Even though the building is important, there's something much more important than the building. From St. Thomas Aquinas Church in Ames, Iowa, Kate Tyndall, ISU-TV. No masses will be held this weekend. Thursday night liturgy will be held at Collegiate Methodist Church. Welcome back to Newswatch 18. I'm Dana the 19th ranked Iowa State volleyball team lost to Kansas Wednesday night. The Cyclones fought back from a two-set deficit but could not capitalize and fell to the Jayhawks in the fifth set. The Cyclones never settled into a steady rhythm in the final set on offense and committed five errors and had only five kills. Tori Canute had a solid match with eight kills and five block assists. Victoria Hurt had 17 kills and ISU best. Kristen Hahn topped her season best with 33 digs. The Twister sisters take on TCU this Saturday at noon in Hilton Coliseum. The Iowa State, Iowa State is hitting the road this weekend for a pair of Big 12 matches. The Cyclones' first game is against defending Big 12 Conference champion Oklahoma State on Friday at 7 p.m. OSU has won the last two meetings with the most recent game ending in a score of one to nothing. The overall record is tied with seven wins, seven losses, and two ties apiece. On Sunday, ISU heads to Texas Tech for a one o'clock game. Tech is looking for redemption after losing last year in double overtime by a score of one to nothing. Cyclones football takes on Texas Tech this Saturday at 6 p.m. in Jack Trice. Both teams are undefeated this season with three and O records. The Red Raiders are looking to turn the tables after the Cyclones beat them in their last two meetings. ISU will meet an impressive showing of offense and defense. Tech is ranked number one in total defense in the nation and second in total offense. Kickoff is scheduled for 6 p.m. Good news for all you NFL fans. The referee strike is over. The NFL and the NFLRA came to an agreement late last night to extend the referee's collective bargain agreement through 2012, 2020. Regular officials will be on the field for the Thursday night game between the Ravens and the Browns. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell has called the first three weeks of the regular season a painful experience. Turkish Student Association are taking, teaching Turkish three days a week at no charge for anyone interested in learning the language. This is the first time Iowa State students and Ames community members are able to take a language class for free. The class meets three days a week, two of which are taught by teachers from the group. The third day is reserved for students to practice the language and talk to each other. That's all we have for tonight's edition of Newswatch 18. Be sure to tune in on Tuesday at 8 for your latest cyclone news, weather, and sports. Have a splendid weekend, Ames.